Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited because today I'm taking you guys on a vlog with me. I'm going to my first ever like book festival, um, which isn't actually true. I've been to some smaller book festivals. This is like a huger one and like the first one I've gone really in my adult life. And it's the anti-racist book festival here in DC. It's gonna be at American University. I've been hesitant to go to any other book fest because usually it's lacking kind of diversity. So the fact that this one is catered specifically for that is amazing. Like the lineup seems really good. It's a combination of both author focus and writer focus um, as far as writing workshops and also author talks on different topics. And you can sign up for the ones that you want to attend. So I'm excited and I hope I can show you guys what it's like and tell you guys about it to see if next year, if you didn't go to this one, if you would want to be interested in going to it next year. I actually just got dropped off. I'm going to the Anti-Racist Book Fest and this is the first one, so the first annual. Um, I don't really know where I'm supposed to be going, but I'm kind of just walking around. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to show you guys what it's like and also on my end for me to know what it's like. And yeah, I'll take you guys hopefully with me. I don't even know if I'm allowed to bring a camera, so this should be interesting. That's cool. And I handed it to an agent 
and then I got a seven-figure deal, which is what so much of the media represents, because you're like, oh, so and so, people come to us, right? I think, well, so and so got a million dollars, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. Like, <laughs> but that's not that's not reality. That's not the daily grind that you want. Okay. Oh, that's better lighting. It's crazy though, because my hair my hair will not stay in a ponytail for anything. But today has been so good. So far, um, the writing workshops have been amazing, like amazing, amazing, and invaluable. Um, and I've gone to two of the author um, speaks. I'm trying to rush to another one. It's been like back to back, it's just amazing. This I can't wait to update once I finish with the last session. I am Jess and Clint Smith. Let's please give them a round of applause. What, is, what makes something a young adult book or not a young adult book? Um, what makes something, I had a poem I wrote um, about drone strikes in, on civilians in Iraq that was just accepted into the best uh, short fiction uh, anthology, right? And I, and I say that not to be like, oh, Clint, you man, but I say it. <laughs> somebody read that and saw it as a, a story. Somebody read it and saw it as a short story. So I think sometimes genre um, can be really limiting in the way that we think about what type of work that people are doing, what type of work people are doing in the world. And, and when I think about that, I think about how I'm not just in the tradition of, of Lucy Hill Clifton and Gwendolyn Brooks and Langston Hughes and, um, and Robert Hayden, but I'm also in the tradition of, of Du Bois, I'm also in the tradition of uh, John O'Franklin, I'm also in the tradition of Ida B. Wells, and all these folks who uh, recognized that there were there was a certain story that this country was attempting to tell. Six years after the Civil War ended, uh, Frederick Douglass gave a speech where he was talking about like, these people are really out here trying to pretend like this war wasn't about slavery. They wrote it down, right? He was like, this is crazy. These people wrote literally their constitution for the Confederacy is the same as the American Constitution, except in the middle they put, we want to own slaves. They didn't say that, but that's essentially what it was, right? They're like, same thing, same thing, same thing. Don't take away our slaves, right? Uh, Alexander Stevens in the Cornerstone speech. Publishing team. And that's where we break down who does what. Uh, and I tried to keep in mind indie publications as well, so indie slash self-published, if you choose to do this on your own, we note that here of what that means. It means paying money up front rather than getting an advance and money being utilized from the publisher in that sense. So, people you might not have read about and you might want to read about them and their experiences. So. There are a lot of black nerds, black weirdos, black cosplayers, people living with disabilities that maybe aren't as visible, people with chronic illness, but also with more visible disabilities like um, amputations, people who are wheelchair users. So I wanted to write about all of these things and black um, together, which I think inherently doesn't give you an option of reading them as a monolith. And it's a very liberal city. And so when you're the only black person in every space you are, even as a light-skinned black person, you become very visible um, and you're treated very differently in a way that's not talked about. So a lot of my work around race basically comes from growing up in an environment where you have to observe very closely to see what's happening because there's never words put to it. And that's kind of why I write what I write because I feel like black people across the country are being collectively gaslit and people of color are by what's happening in this country, and especially in liberal spaces. It was a Christian school too, so there were these layers of things happening where we're good Christian white people, we don't believe in race, so we don't talk about it at all. But all the while I was dealing with really terrible casual racism all the time, and then much more aggressive racism all the time at that school, and there was just no way for the faculty to acknowledge that. So I would say something like, oh, this person call this other black person at our school a racial slur, and the principal would say, wow, but you know, black people are racist too sometimes. Oh. And that would be the entire discussion about it. Like, nothing else would happen. We were notorious for running teachers out of our school, but the teachers that we ran out the most were definitely the few people of color who attempted to teach there. So, I mean, ruthless mistreatment of the one Chinese teacher we had very briefly, ruthless mistreatment of the one Latinx teacher we had very briefly, People said terrible, terrible things to them, and there was just sort of nothing done about it. So there's this institutional level at which the racism is operating, where the faculty are allowing this to happen, and this, the school's very nature is allowing it to happen, and then also there's the everyday microaggressions and racism that was operating. <laughs> What were some of the 
common threads and themes that, that connected, that you saw essay after essay? Yeah. Well, for me, I, I, as an editor, it was a really humbling experience to remind me that everyone starts in the same place. Like, what place is that? It's <laughs> being a vulnerable. Like, you're just being open and sharing your testimony. Everyone starts just being simple, writing it on the page, getting it out of there. And then the editor, the process, the talking to the panel, it starts to, it has new interpretations, and there's a whole new energy that comes to the work. And when you write it, you don't know what the reaction is going to be. And quite honestly, you don't care. You just need to get it out of your body. You know? It's like a therapeutic. Like, I need to tell this story, it has to live, it has to be a memoir, it has to be an essay. You know, here's this extraordinary woman who is the most widely produced black woman playwright, one of the most widely read black women in U.S. history. Um, there's been three film versions of A Raisin in the Sun. It is constantly produced, it's a regular part of school curricula, et cetera, et cetera. And yet there hadn't been, um, in many years, a kind of full-length treatment of her life. Um, and I wanted to look for the sense of. So I am officially done with the anti racist book fest. All right, I feel like I'm in college because I'm freaking on a college campus, which is super cool. Um, American University is. Ooh, look at the sun right there. No, but I just freaking finished the anti-racist first annual book festival um, and it was freaking amazing it was everything that I wanted and more like this was so well thought out um, so to break it up they had a combination of different writer workshops as well as different author discussions and I mean the author list just goes on and on Jacqueline Woodson Jason Reynolds Clint Smith um, Nafisa Thomas Spires, Glory Edom, Monty Perry, um, Carol Anderson. Um, I mean, I'm not going to name because literally the list is too long. I'll probably put it in the comment sections below so that way you actually um, know who all was there, but you all could just go to the website and figure it out as well. Um, but they also had so many people in the um, writing community and industry from editors to agents to um, different perspectives on like one of the first ones that I did I think was on the proposal um, process um, another workshop I did was securing a literary agent another one was um, on writing fiction um, so they had various different ones they had for nonfiction it was really really amazing especially if you're a writer or aspiring writer that was pretty much invaluable to me um, and then there was also I took so many notes I felt like I was literally in school like I felt like I got a crash course in all this stuff for a bargain and a steal um, and the author discussions were amazing as well because you're pretty much hearing from some of your favorite writers like that I feel like the best author discussion for me that I participated in was probably the Jason Reynolds and Jacqueline Woodson one just because it was on the topic of writing for youth and I don't know like their work is just so impactful what they do and like some of the conversations was super I guess impactful um, and just beautiful and then also um, Clint Smith and oh my gosh I'm gonna forget the other author's name I'll put it at the bottom he pulled out a freaking harmonica because they asked him basically like what and what is his process like when he's writing it was I think the workshop was called on the lyric and he was talking about like what he hears homeboy pulls out a harmonica and his pocket was like well what I usually hear is ah, the blues and just starts going and I mean it was just a really interesting um, honest open safe space um, also the I mean I could go on and on because so, so many of the um, discussions were good but in ending I think it was really well thought out and really well put together and I am so hungry that's one thing pack snacks or eat breakfast because technically you pace yourself so I could have left and got food but I don't want to miss any of the goodness so I didn't eat <laughs> I thankfully had a big breakfast but I'm hungry because it is like 4 30 right now so I'm gonna go ahead and get some food and yeah I'll see you guys on the flip side it's a win for me first annual you guys did that it was so organized so well put together I can't wait for next year bye you already know they're gonna have a second annual save the date april 25th 2020 here in washington dc 
it's gonna be lit. I'm already excited. 